I know as far as a withdrawal, uh, what I went through, um, it wasn't real nice, you know, we can put it that way. And uh, it was pretty tough. And, and I know they say alcohol and uh, Xanax and, and such drugs combination, trying to withdraw, and the body's become so addicted over years and years of it that it could kill a person. What are some real places that people can go to and find that support and find that help? Church, of course, is number one. Good, caring people, pastors. Give us a little example of that. Uh, there's a there's different support groups throughout the community. I know in the Times Tribune, if you'll look in the Around Town News, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. There's different uh, organizations that offer help various days of the week, and there are support groups throughout the Tri County area. You can find those in that uh, in that part of the Times Tribune. Um, as far as my experience, I needed to be around people that had been through what I'd been through, and uh, it's harder, you know, it's hard to fool somebody when they've been there, you know. Right. And, uh, so that's what really helps me a lot. Well, you know, you've heard these stories about the ingredients and meth, and some of it's battery acid, some of it's um, Drano, bug killer, whatever. This stuff will absolutely kill you. Oh yeah, listen, and it don't. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about sin is fun for a season. Mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people, myself, when I first tried meth, I didn't think it was uh, it was that big of a deal. I didn't think of what was in it. I thought about, you know, my mind went to where, you know, everybody says this is a great thing and a great buzz, you know. And right. I tried everything else, so I tried that, and I was hooked. I was hooked from the first time. <sighs> what would you say to the man or the woman sitting down and saying, man, I need some help? You know, nobody understands what I'm going through. I'm so addicted to this drug, and I just don't see no way out. Listen, if there's someone out there listening today that can hear my voice, listen, I have been there. I thought nobody understood, and, and no one no one could possibly yeah. understand what I'd been through. And um, and actually what I did, and I, at the time in my life, uh, I wasn't no Christian, and I didn't know if I even believed in God or not, but I sent a quick prayer up that said, God, if you're for real, I need help. And... Uh, what happened was I had a friend that had got involved in recovery and she had left me her phone number mm -hmm. and I called her and uh, she began to get me help and uh, you know she worked with various groups and uh, that's what's got me to where I am today praise God now you attend the Parkway Ministries here in Corbin yes uh, Karen Church uh, ready to receive people to come in that's looking for some real answers yes Praise uh, God. We've got a great church. Uh, the pastor, he, he's just great. Pastor Mark Heisel, mm -hmm. uh, and his family, uh, they've been there a little bit over a year and a half. Uh, he's greatly involved with the community. Our church is open to the community. Uh, there are support groups that's located there. There's several different uh, support groups, various days of the week, every day of the week, actually, Monday through Friday. Um, we also have a free community dinner for people that come in. It's the second and fourth. Let me get this right. It's the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. It's free to the community. Uh, there's prayer rooms available. People will come in. They'll pray with you. There's there's people like me that's there various days of the week. Uh, I'll help anyone I can. No better, greater support group than the church. A good pastor and a loving, caring church that's there for people that says, hey, we'll pray for you. We'll help you. We'll get through this together. And that's what this is supposed to be about. Yeah, listen, I, I just... I love our pastor. Listen, uh, he goes out into the community. Uh, there's various uh, treatment centers in Corbin that uh, help people with addictions. And I know personally that he goes out uh, usually every other week. Right. He, and he visits and, and he's, uh, he lets the guys know that there's a God and there's a God that loves them. Praise uh, God. So I never heard that when I was a kid. I always heard about a condemning God that was out to get me. And he always lets the clients and all the young men know that there's a God and God loves them. Oh, that's so powerful. And you know, our conversation is making me think about the man that fell amongst thieves. Mm -hmm. He was wounded. He was left for dead. He was laying by the roadside. And there was a couple that saw him and passed on by. But one, the Good Samaritan, he come over and helped him. And that's who we're supposed to be today. We see a, a man or a woman or a young person on the street and you know they're on drugs, you know their life's in shambles, we're supposed to be that light to them and show them love and help. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. I always tell our pastor, I say, listen, uh, Jesus didn't go around saying who could serve him. He went about serving others, you know. And, and I believe we should be a light in the people, you know, to let people see. And, and being down the road that I've been down, mm -hmm. I have a lot more compassion. 
a lot more compassion. Well, you know, we talked a lot about drugs, but you know, alcohol's just the same thing. You alcohol know. is a drug. Right. Yeah. People are so addicted to alcohol, they think they can't get through the day without a drink, especially the hard liquors like whiskey and vodka and things like that. I know people that uh, they, they shake. Oh, absolutely. Till they get that first drink. Mm -hmm. And you know, they've been addicted to these alcoholics for years. And they're looking for help and support groups and a way out of this. Yeah, they're out there. Uh, alcohol is a drug. Uh, I, I got hooked on prescription medication also. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in a bad motorcycle wreck years ago and got hooked on it through that also, you know. And so there's prescription medication. There's people sitting on pews right now that are addicted to prescription medication. You know, I was one of them. And, uh, you know, and I didn't have enough humility. And, and I felt like a lot of shame and ego, or really a lot of shame, actually. And there, I was just, uh, like, I couldn't reach out for help or really let nobody know where I really was, you know. It seems we're living in a society that a lot of people's looking for the next big high. Mm -hmm. They want that next big super drug that's coming out. You know, it started out with a long time ago acid and mm -hmm. cocaine and heroin. And now you got meth and you got prescription pills. And they're even going so far as today smoking bed bugs for the next high, the next, you know, big buzz. But we need to teach the people there's a better way. Jesus is still the way. Oh, yeah, listen, they can have all the drugs. Um, I tried that for years and years and years. You know, I had that, uh, had that empty void, that spiritual void, mm -hmm. trying to fill it with everything and, and never could find the right thing. And listen, uh, since I got since I got involved in recovery and I got saved, there's not been one day that I went by that I've not prayed, mm -hmm. you know keep that contact with God, you know, and pray to Jesus. And uh, listen, to be sitting here on Good Friday, thank God. Listen, I, I was thinking, ain't that something, you know? And I love that. 